Hello and welcome to Chicory's Maintenance Series. This week we're doing part two of finding out where the clunk is coming from on our Velvet Drive uh, marine gear. So, um, when I talked to you last time, I talked about that this internal coupler right here might be part of the issue. So I need to unbolt this coupler and I need to slide the shaft back. One of the things I need to do though is, you can see there's a little bit of crud um, at the front of my stuffing box right where the packing gland is and the packing gland is inside this part so I need to clean this material off this little dried um, salt deposits so when I slide the shaft back I'm not getting this crud into my packing gland so I'm going to do that first and then I'll touch back with you okay I'm back you can see right here uh, Tracy zooms in I used vinegar, some Scotch-Brite, and uh, a very, very gentle touch with a razor blade uh, just to clean all the little salt deposits. Now, one of the things that you might be asking is why we had some of that. Um, I keep my stuffing box loose so that uh, the temperature is always nice and low. Um, we probably have like four to six drips per minute when we're underway. And when we're stopped, it's maybe one drip a minute or something like that. Um, but I like keeping it that way. It puts a little bit more uh, build up here uh, because the salt water is dripping out at a higher rate. But we never have issues with overheating our stuffing box. So the next step is taking out these four bolts. And I will be back in one minute when that's done. So I'm back. That went very well. I removed the four great aid bolt um, that will held the coupling together and down here how this works is there's two halves of this coupling you can maybe see the two different surfaces and they're held together by the grade 8 bolt and one of the things that's interesting about this coupling and the reason that I'm using these grade 8 bolts with just a nylock locking nut is because there's very little room between the back half of the transmission casing and the uh, part of the flange so i just have enough room to fit just a nylock in here and that's nothing that's it i can't have another washer in there the reason i have these big rubber gloves on you may have remembered from the cutlass bearing video that i safety wired the bolts on here and i have um, pins holding uh, the coupling to the shaft so i'm just protecting my hands I've cleaned the shaft, so now I'm going to start to move it back. My head's going to be in your way just for a second, but hopefully this will move back. Okay, so now I've got enough space here, and now I'm going to just move this and that is pretty tight. I I hear a little, a teeny amount of clicking. Um, I'm trying to decide if it's worth the effort to take this <clears throat> coupling flange off. I think I will just because it's, I've already got it this far apart. I vote yes as well. Okay, Tracy votes yes. I, anyway, so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna push this back a little further. <clears throat> I've got about probably five inches before the prop hits the rudder. Oh. 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 Uh, I'm gonna have to get a pry bar or something to help me move that along, because that's pretty hard. So I'll be back in a second. So when I pull this uh, coupling out, if you remember, there's a seal here and I'm worried about um, the transmission fluid coming out. So I've opened up um, the fill port and I'm going to use this hand pump that I've specifically uh, designated for transmission fluid to draw that out and put it in a waste oil container. I'll be back in a second when I'm done. Okay, I'm back. Um, it was pretty difficult getting the uh, shaft back. I don't know if it was some growth in the um, cutlass bearing or if there was just a teeny bit of the um, crud that was in the uh, stuffing box that was preventing it. Usually it slides back hard, but not super difficult. This one was quite a bit more difficult. And I needed to move it back far enough to get this Unga uh, 
and one sixteenth, no, one and eleven sixteenths inch socket in there. Uh, so now I have enough room. But part of what I have a problem is making sure that the transmission doesn't spin. So I'm going to take one of the grade eight bolts I have in there. I'm going to jam it against the hull. I'm going to go put the wrench on. Oh, wow. It's never good. Wow, that's not good. Well, you don't have to watch me take the rest of this off, but this is spinning way too easily. Um, I'll be back. Okay, so uh, this came, this bolt came off relatively easily, uh, as you saw in the uh, last segment. The only issue I had was at the very last minute when I would turn it and take the wrench off, it would spring back. There was some sort of rubber material in here that was um, causing issues. and. Uh, I couldn't do it with the socket itself, so I ended up using the socket and putting a pipe wrench around it so that I could hold it in place and do it until I broke the rubber loose. So now I'm going to take off this nut. And I have this towel there because even though I drained the transmission, I uh, um, don't know if there's going to be some oil coming out. I'm just going to set that aside and examine that later. I'm going to start to pull this out. I'll put it back in right away if I start to get a gush of... Oh, there's no gush of oil. That's good. Uh, all right, I'm going to inspect this stuff, and then uh, I'll get back to you in one second. So I'm back. Last time you saw me, I was in the engine room pulling out the coupler. Uh, I had to take a shower because I was so gross I couldn't sit down. I'm going to have Tracy zoom in here for a second and show you what we're seeing here. <clears throat> so this surface right here is what the entire back of this coupler should look like. This entire area here has been worn away and it's 24 thousandths of an inch of wear. Now the only way that this can really happen is there's a bearing that rubs against this and the bearing and the coupler should spin at the same speed. The bearing must have seized, frozen to the outside and started spinning against this. Now the bad thing about that is not only was there a bunch of wear here, but um, the bearing to be able to spin against this means that the internal race of the bearing was spinning. So the shaft that's going through here was wearing on the bearing, and this was wearing on the bearing as well. So a lot of wear is going on. You can see the transmission fluid I pulled out of it and what the new transmission fluid looks like. Now you might be asking yourself, hey, how did you possibly over uh, not catch this? But I wanted to show you, if I pull this up and look, see how clear the, it looks? When you see it on a dipstick, it doesn't look, doesn't smell. And I put a dot here and a dot here. So when I was checking the transmission fluid, every single time I did an engine room check uh, before we started up, I would dip it in, I'd look, it looks great, smell it, wipe it off. It, it looked red. I didn't realize that there was particulate in it. So I've been pumping the particulate of this 24 thousandths of wear through the transmission. I could repair these parts, but uh, I think it's most prudent to replace the transmission. And uh, a remanufactured transmission is about 2100 to 2900, depending on what part source you use. And uh, that comes with a warranty. It's only a six month warranty, but at least you get to test it. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about why this may have happened. Yes, Tracy. I'm going to ask a question okay. about regarding checking the transmission fluid. So when you check it, could those particulate have settled down into the bottom part? So when you check it, you wouldn't even have seen it? Do they separate yes. out? Okay, yeah. I was just curious, yeah. sorry. Yep, no, it's great. 
Um, so I had an opportunity to contact an expert in velvet drives about this situation uh, because I wanted to confirm my hypothesis about uh, the bearing and about the shaft and all of that. And he said that yes, I was correct, but that uh, unless the problem was corrected, I would continue to have this issue. And I said, okay, you know, what do you believe the problem is? And uh, the most probable thing that he came up with is that the engine mounts are bad. Now that makes perfect sense. My engine mounts are past what they should be for life. It has been on our list to replace, but um, until this clunking started, we didn't really hear or feel anything horribly out of line. I mean, everything felt pretty normal to us about how the engine ran, how it ran under power, but uh, the engine must be moving just enough to throw off alignment where it started to bind this bearing and it caused this issue. So part of this project not only is replacing the transmission, but I'm going to be replacing the engine mounts as well. Now part of this is it is hurricane season, so we don't want to dismantle the boat during the season. I'm going to order the transmission, I will put the transmission in, and then after hurricane season, I will lift the engine and do the engine mounts. So the next video uh, in this series will be me replacing the transmission. Um, I think that's it for now, so I'm going to thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, and of course viewing. Until next week, thank you for hanging in.